so welcome students to one more session of your need preparation as i told you just we have two more days isn't it right and today we'll be studying about the or today and tomorrow also rather we'll be studying about the cheat sheets of different inorganic chapters because inorganic is something which is very difficult for most of the students isn't it right so today in this video i'll be teaching about chemical bonding cheat sheets cheat sheets after that i'll be going with p block elements I'll be going with chemical uh, coordination compounds like that. Let's start off. So the certain questions or certain important topics which you have to remember for your need. Let's see. So whenever a chemical bonding or chemical bonding concept is thought, remember when is the chemical bonding formed? Basically, a chemical bond is expected to be formed when energy of the aggregate formed is about 40 kilojoules. Remember. Again, when is a chemical bond or a chemical bond is expected? Let us write that. Remember these points. A chemical bond is expected. When is it expected? Whenever a two come this one, you know, <coughs> whenever two atoms combine together to form a molecule, when this aggregate, this is called aggregate, isn't it? So when the energy of the aggregate formed is about how much should be the energy? The energy should be about forty kilojoules per mole. Right, lower than the separate molecules. Remember this concept. So the energy should be 40 kilojoules per mole. Let us learn one more concept. What is that? Always remember a chemical bond is an exothermic process. The formation of a chemical bond. What is that? We have written formation of chemical bond. Means whenever a chemical bond is formed between two atoms, that is always an exothermic process. Exothermic process. Exothermic. Now, next important thing. when the coordination number means when basically in chemical bonding when the coordination number increases okay one more important concept remember when coordination number this can be asked as a question remember when coordination number increases what will happen the forces of attraction what are those forces the called as coulomb forces of attraction isn't it so when the coordination number increases your coulombic forces coulombic forces of attraction coulombic forces of attraction increases when coulombic forces of attraction increase what will happen automatically stability also stability increases remember this concept hope this is clear students right so now let us go to one more uh, cheat sheet means concepts you know basic small small concepts but very important for your chemical bonding chapter right after this let us learn as a general rule basically uh, means an atomic crystal when is an atomic crystal formed means uh, an atomic crystals are formed by which element lighter elements isn't it where are there is lighter element present they are present in the middle columns of the periodic table so you can remember atomic crystals are formed by lighter elements which are present in the middle uh, period means middle columns of the periodic table we have s block p block d block and f block so middle column of the periodic table that is one let us learn one more important thing so this question is basically asked fecl3 is more covalent than fecl2 why so let us write the question why is fecl3 more covalent than fecl2 if this question is asked why what is the reason important word or the key word is polarizing power of fe plus 3 important question uh, this is so what is the reason fecl3 is more covalent than fecl2 because of polarizing power of fe plus 3 right so because of this polarizing power it will drag the electron cloud and form a covalent bond okay right? one more one more same question like this only answer would be the same if the question is asked why is essential 4 more covalent than essential 2 if this is asked the reason would be the same polarizing power of s s in here remember yeah so let us come back to the next concept of chemical bonding which is very important what is that when i go to uh, chemical bonding basically some questions are frequently asked so i picked up these uh, concepts but boron among we very well know boron is an electron deficient compound so it 
mac, uh, it forms maximum number of electron deficient compounds than any other element in the periodic table. So remember this clue, boron forms maximum electron deficient compounds. So boron electron deficient compounds. Understood? Compounds. Done. Next one. Greater the number of lone pairs. Suppose if the number of lone pairs are more. Let us see this concept now. Greater the number of lone pairs between two bonding atoms. What will be greater? Greater will be the repulsion. Obviously, isn't it? What will happen to the bond? Weaker will be the bond. Weaker will be the bond. We remember this concept. Let us go to one more. If I have to speak about the SNP electrons. So, the actual number of SNP electrons, where are they present in, they present in the, this one, no? the outermost shell of any element. What, are, what do they represent? They represent the maximum covalency. What am I trying to tell you? What is called maximum covalency? If they ask you the concept of maximum covalency, maximum covalency, remember, it is nothing but actual number of S and P electrons present in the outermost shell. Present in outermost shell. That is called outermost shell. That is called maximum covalency. Right. Next one. If they ask you this question, the hydrogen bond is stronger in HF and even it persists in vapor state. Right? If I ask you, what would you, means what would be the answer for you? Basically, the hydrogen bond is stronger in HF. The reason is, such bonds, they account for, what is the fact in that? They account for the fact that gaseous hydrogen fluoride is largely polymer polymerized. Right? What am I trying to tell you? The hydrogen bond is stronger in HF. And it also persist even in vapor phase. Let us write that. Hydrogen bond is stronger in HF and even it it persists in in vapor phase in vapor phase. Okay, basically HF when I take, it gets largely polymerized. What are the different uh, molecular spe species? It forms H2F2, it forms H3F3, it forms H4F4, it forms H5F5, it forms H6F6. Remember this in the exam if they ask you. Right? Now, next thing. Hydrogen bonding among, we have different types of bonds, isn't it? In that, how is the hydrogen bonding, why is it strongest? Because hydrogen bonding is stabilized by resonance, right? So hydrogen bonding is the strongest bond. Let us write that among the different bonds. Hydrogen bond is the strongest when when the bond is bonded structure stabilized by resonance when the bonded structure is stabilized by resonance very well known resonance stabilized resonance Done. next one let's come back and start with the next chapter that is cheat sheets for coordination compounds. Let us write the heading. Cheat sheets for coordination compounds. 
so these are the most important concepts so try to note that so what is everett salts everett salts basically this is in a uh, simple thing but in ncert we don't use it this may be one of the question everett salt what is everett salt it is k2 fe cn6 how did i get this by reduction of persian blue right so <coughs> persian blue when i reduce it i get everett salts if they ask you what is everett salts you can note this as an answer or tick the correct answer for this next if they ask you what is this reaction bedecker reaction let me write the reaction basically in this particular reaction you have any two fe cn5 no combined with sodium sulfide i get a coordinate complex in a 4 2 plus 2 4 if he is there just like a double salt see cn5 is here no is here okay dot so3 this is called bedecker reaction right yes let's see one more concept what is masking basically masking is a process you know when a substance without any physical separation or if it is transformed that is it does not enter into a particular reaction okay once again masking is a process in which a substance without physical separation of it means i am not separating it physically so it's getting means so it is transformed means it will not enter into particular reaction only that is masking of copper by cn minus that is one important thing right now if they ask you what is macro cyclic effect okay hope this is clear students let's write one more suppose if they ask you means in the, there is a question on this concept macro cyclic effect they ask you what is this basically this particular term it refers to thermodynamic stability of which one so let us write refers to thermodynamic stability of which one of a polydentate ligand of a complex with polydentate ligand of a complex with polydentate ligand okay done let us take an example polydentate means four sides isn't it for the ligand okay no this is not neat in h in h <coughs> this is a polydentate ligand right students so we are talking micro my uh, macro cyclic effect basically speaks about the thermal stability of a polydentate ligand right next one what is suppose they ask you what is turnbull's blue we have persian blue and turnbull's blue isn't it yeah so persian blue and turnbull's blue is nothing but potassium ferric ferrocyanate let us see one more question if they ask you persian blue and turn bulls blue what is that this is nothing but potassium ferric ferro cyanide and but 
when I see the color, the intensity of color of Turnbull's blue is less than Persian blue. Why it why it is less? Because it is a decrease in color. Means the formula of this is K two Fe Fe C N six. So decrease in color is due to what presence of a white compound in the formula, right? That is potassium ferrous ferrocyanide. Once potassium ferrous ferrocyanide, right? One more concept we'll see. The color of the complex. In coordination gamma. Basically, we speak about color of the complex, isn't it? So the color of the complexes are explained in terms of what electronic transitions, correct? Between what t orbitals? That's why we call color of coordinate or coordination compounds is due to what is due to DD transitions. DD transitions. Remember that. Right. Next. In we have different theories: VBT theory, valence bond theory, Morte theory, molecular orbital theory, crystal field theory. In crystal field theory, what does it explain? It explains certain geometries, isn't it? Hope you understand this concept. Yeah. In terms of CFSC, that is crystal field stabilization energy. Okay, students. Right. Now, let's see some more. Let us speak about ligands now. Ligands with larger groups form unstable rings. Then ligands of smaller groups, correct? Yes. Once again, ligands of larger groups form unstable rings compared to. Ligands with smaller groups, correct? Yes. Uh, now let us see one more. What is flexi dentate character? Let's see this flexi dentate character. What is this basically? Which one will have this? Basically, polydentate ligands are said to have flexidentate character. What does it mean? See, if they do not uh, use all its donor atoms to get coordinated, then it is called flexidentate character. Once again, polydentate ligands are said to have flexidentate character. First, let us remember that. Polydentate ligands have flexi dentate character. Okay, right. What is this in this? They will not use all their donor atoms to get coordinated. Means when they are coordinating, they do not use all the donor atoms. Example is EDTA, you know, it acts as hexadentate ligand, but it can also act as pentadentate and tetradentate ligand. That means it will not use all its donor atoms. So, example is EDTA. Right, students? Yes. Now, let me come back and teach you some more cheat sheets about P block elements. Hope the concepts, I mean, I picked up the important concepts of uh, your uh, uh, coordination compounds as well as chemical bonding. I'll come back and teach you again the P block cheat sheets. Let me meet you tomorrow again.